Hi everyone, Ms. Carr here. I'm going to share some information about dual enrollment. This is for students who are brand new to dual enrollment. But we're going to cover a lot of information, so let's go ahead and get started. So first, what is dual enrollment? So dual enrollment is um, credits students earn both at the college and at the high school at the same time. For example, Composition 1 taken at Eastern Florida also counts as a full credit of a high school English course. So students are earning some high school credit and college credit at the same time. So there are three different options for dual enrollment. The first, the most common one is just part-time. Students can take up to three courses in the fall and spring semesters. So three courses fall, three courses spring, and then one course in the summer. Um, so that would be part-time dual enrollment. Early admissions is just for seniors. So in the fall and spring semesters of their senior year, they could be full-time at the college taking four or five classes over there and not have any Cocoa Beach classes at all. So that would be early admissions. And then there's the application process for that that they would do in their junior year if that was something that they wanted to do. Um, and then the last option here is full-time. So this is for seniors as well. So their fall semester of senior year would be normal. They could have they could be a part time dual enrollment student taking three courses over there and four um, through Cocoa Beach or um, a mix of something like that. And then in their spring semester, they're full time at Eastern Florida and don't come on campus and take any classes with Cocoa Beach during their last semester of 12th grade. Um, so the course waiting for GPAs, dual enrollment courses are weighted the same as AP courses and the IB courses. So when our, the school calculates their GPAs, their weighted GPAs, you get a full point higher for the dual enrollment courses, same as AP and IB courses. And then when the state universities calculate GPAs, they do that the same way as well. They weight that the same as AP and IB. Um, so the Associates in Arts degree students do have the opportunity to graduate high school with both their high school diploma and their Associates in Arts degree if they choose to do that. Um, so that's like two year, the first two years of college, you get a lot of the prerequisites and um, common courses out of the way. So that's kind of like freshman and sophomore years at the state university. It's a total of 60 college credits to earn the associates. Um, and then it's a combination of general elective classes and elective classes. So students who are wanting to graduate high school with their associate's degree and they already want to know what they want to major in at a four-year university you want to make sure that the electives you're choosing to take match up with your major for example the education major at ucf um, there are three courses required to take to be fully accepted into the education program before having those three courses. Um, they call it education pending and you're not fully in the degree program until you've satisfied those classes. And all three of those classes are offered at Eastern Florida. So just an example, start planning ahead and picking purposeful electives if you're wanting to take classes at Eastern Florida. And then students who graduate with an associate's degree maintain first time in college benefits at state universities. So when they're doing those college applications, even though they've taken college courses, they're still going to indicate that they're first time in college. So this is just a sample three year track that we've come up with. Um, so you can see <coughs> what the plan would be um, to graduate with an associate's degree. So starting the summer after ninth grade, you can take one course at Eastern Florida. And then in the fall of 10th grade, two classes over there. In the spring, two classes. 
and that would equal around 15 credit hours. It's going to depend on which courses you take. That's going to vary a little bit. Most of their courses are three credits over there, but some are four, so this is going to change a little bit. Um, and then the summer after 10th grade, another summer class, and then the fall three classes, spring three classes, another summer class before 12th grade, three classes in the fall of 12th grade, and then full time four classes in the spring. So depending on the options that students choose to take, they could be full time here in the fall, or they could, if they wanted to be part time their last semester of senior year, three, but then that one course here instead of the four, you're gonna need to fit in somewhere else. So for 10th grade, students can take up to three classes each semester, like we said, uh, but it's recommended as they're starting out in college classes that they just take two at a time. So some admissions requirements to take any class at Eastern Florida. They cannot start until the summer after ninth grade. Um, they have to have a cumulative unweighted GPA of a 3.0 or higher. They have to meet the college level placement scores in reading and writing. To take any course, they have to have passed um, the reading and writing components, and we'll talk about what those are in a little bit. They have to um, submit an Eastern Florida application. They have to show good attendance and responsible behavior, uh, meet program deadlines and requirements, attend a specific Eastern Florida dual enrollment orientation. Right now, that is completely virtually, um, so they would have to attend that orientation. And then here's the sample um, schedule. Um, so students may have one class at Eastern Florida on Mondays and Wednesdays, and then they would have a different class at Eastern Florida on Tuesdays and Thursdays. So that would be equivalent to having both both their first and second periods off of their Cocoa Beach schedule. And they would come in during third period to their Cocoa Beach class and finish the day third through seventh with us. There are no Friday Eastern Florida classes. So a typical um, class at Eastern Florida usually meets either Monday or Wednesday or Tuesday, Thursday. So students can plan their schedules accordingly like that. Um, some other options, they can do it at the very beginning of the school day for us and take the first two or three periods off, or they could do it at the end of the day and have their last few periods off their Cocoa Beach schedule. Eastern Florida also has evening classes. They have face-to-face -face classes, completely online classes, and then hybrid classes. So the hybrid classes, instead of meeting both Tuesday and Thursday, they would meet only on Tuesday and then be required to do some online components for that Thursday period. So hybrid is both online and in person. So some test scores required. So there's a few different options of different tests that students can take. So students most likely take the PERT. Um, that's one of the college entrance exams. Eastern Florida offers the PERT. And for the first time this year, Cocoa Beach is actually offering the PERT on campus as well. So the reading score is a 106 or higher. Writing is a 103 or higher. Students can also meet um, the college entry scores with the SAT and this is you get a two digit number as well on your college board report um, so the reading there is a 24 and the writing is a 25 or the ACT if they've already taken that is a reading 19 17 for writing the CPT is often given by Eastern Florida um, it's not as popular as some of the other ones but that is an option so it's an 83 for both reading and writing. And then the AccuPlacer is something that's new. 
um, that's a college board exam and that's a 25 for both reading and writing. The AccuPlacer students can take at home. They have to sign up in advance, but that's something that students can just from the comfort of their home take the AccuPlacer. There is a fee involved with the AccuPlacer if that's something that the student wanted to take instead. Um, the PERT that's going to be on campus is completely free for students. Um, and then, but we're seeing a lot of students just stay home uh, because of the pandemic and everything and take the AccuPlacer. So a bunch of different options there. And you notice on this page, there's no math score here because you only have to pass the math portion of the PERT or any of these other exams if you want to take a math class at Eastern Florida. But to take any kind of class over there, you have to have reading and writing scores. So that's why you don't see math on this screen. Now, here are the math scores. So to take um, MAC 1105, which is college algebra, the most common course for the PERT, you have to have a 123. ACT is a 20 for the math, 27.5 on the SAT math. 95 for the CPT and the AccuPlacer, a minimum of a 258. And then the other course up here is um, topics and math, but we see far more students take the college algebra course. So those are the math requirements to take any math class at Eastern Florida. So there are PERT study guides online. If you just Google PERT study guide or PERT Eastern Florida, you will find um, the study guides. Um, if for some reason the student takes um, the PERT or the AccuPlacer, they can retest 30 days after the initial test and try to get the scores again. So you want to start setting up your test appointments as soon as possible, just in case you don't hit one of the scores, you have enough time to retake. So requirements to stay in dual enrollment. So students have to maintain a high school cumulative GPA of a 3.0 or higher. And then you also have to have a term GPA at Eastern Florida of a 2.0 or higher. If for some reason you fall below that 2.0 at Eastern Florida, they're gonna put you on probation, and give you another semester to, to give you another chance and bring that up. Um, but if you drop below a 3.0 at all, you cannot continue, sorry, 3.0 high school GPA, you will not be able to continue dual enrollment until you get that back up. So some benefits of dual enrollment, you're getting used to college expectations and college courses while you're still in high school. Um, Eastern Florida's class size is much smaller than a traditional four-year college class size. Um, Eastern Florida's class sizes are about 19 and 7 in some of their honors classes. Um, students can complete their first two years of college, no tuition, lab fees, housing costs, or textbooks cost. Um, there are a few limited fees that students will have to pay with Eastern Florida. That would be um, there's a technology fee, parking fee if they're on campus, um, and some of the textbooks that students would keep, um, there's a cost associated with them. But for the majority, the tuition and books are completely free. Students can graduate with their associate's degree and transfer those credits to college. Um, they still maintain the first time in college benefits at the state universities they complete, can complete their major prerequisites and finish their college education much sooner. Um, the first two years, we kind of touched on this earlier, are used to meet the requirements of the intended major of the four-year university. Like I was saying with the education major at UCF, you wanna make sure you're taking purposeful electives because you have 24 credits of electives just to earn the associate's degree. It's a lot of electives to play from. 
um, figure out what you like, what you don't like, but if you already know what you want to major in, you want to look at that college, let's say UCF's education program, you want to see what their prerequisites are and make sure you're taking those at Eastern Florida. Um, so the estimated cost of attendance at UF for total for just one year is over $21,000. So completing your first two years um, your, with your associate's degree, it's a lot, a lot of savings. So students who are dual enrollment students would have an Eastern Florida advisor to help them. So they will help plan their degree, whether they're wanting to get their associates, um, and arts associates in science, they will help with all of that, plan their classes, tell them which classes they should take together, all of that kind of stuff. The advisor over there actually registers them for the classes. Students have access to track their degree program online, and the advisor also help them with academic support. Um, they have like a writing center there, a math lab there, Dual enrollment students also have access to their mental health counseling that's completely free there. So there's a lot of benefits to being a dual enrollment student. Um, they also have a career planning center um, and then a good course to take if students don't know what they want to major in is Discover Your Major. It's a three credit elective course. So, and then students can take, there's clubs over there, different seminars, all types of stuff. So some factors to consider, there are additional study expectations with college coursework. Um, they're gonna be in classes with adults. There's gonna be no modifications or, or adjustments just because the student is in high school. The college professors do not care. They're not gonna change their curriculum because of that. And then Eastern Florida grades are permanent you're starting your college transcript, and so that grade is gonna permanently be on your college and high school transcript. And then poor grades can impact scholarships and university admissions. So not to scare anybody, just to give you all a realistic expectation, um, just good information to know. Um, additionally, you may have to do summer classes to graduate with the associate's degree and high school diploma at the same time. You're going to have to balance the college classes, high school classes, and then sports and clubs, whatever you're involved in, jobs, all at the same time. You're going to have to make sure that you are meeting both the high school credits required and the associate's degree requirements. And then you would have to provide your own transportation to and from Eastern Florida. Unfortunately, we do not have a um, busing for that. So students or parents would be responsible for their own transportation. So, so additional factors for parents. Um, the school counselor at Cocoa Beach is the point of contact. Um, parents cannot contact the Eastern Florida instructors at all. Um, if parents call the, the professor over there, cannot give any information whatsoever to parents. They will not be able to tell you if the student's attending their class, what their grade is, absolutely nothing. Um, so sometimes the school schedule and the Eastern Florida schedule don't match up. So for this semester that we're currently in, the Eastern Florida classes actually started before the, our high school classes started. So just something to keep in mind, you're gonna be having, pay attention to two calendars at once. Again, the family is responsible for transportation and then the student's responsible for any consumables that would be like the workbooks, lab manuals. That's um, what I was talking about earlier with the textbook requirement there. That's the only types of textbooks that students would be required to purchase out of pocket. Additional considerations, 
Um, students are expected to attend class and meet assignment deadlines. If students are not attending the class, the teacher can withdraw them. And if you get a withdrawal for attendance, you're not going to be able to continue dual enrollment. The college does not have an excused attendance policy. Um, so if you're absent, if you're sick, you can't turn in a doctor's note, the professor is not going to care. Um, students who miss a class due to an unavoidable conflict should talk to their instructor for any makeup options. And then the instructor decision is final, so they may say sorry, um, but you miss that work. And students enrolled in any extra curricular activities so should schedule the Eastern Florida classes at times that don't conflict with practice, games, performances. Again, that's not going to be an excused absence to your college professor. And um, this is just again about the Eastern Florida dual enrollment orientation. That is a requirement before you can sign up for any classes over there. Okay, so steps to getting started. Number one is it. Um, listen to this information session. Make sure you're meeting the minimum GPA requirement. Submit the Cocoa Beach dual enrollment contract. Um, see your counselor for this. We'll have these available in student services. Um, start reviewing and studying for the PERT. Take some PERT practice tests. Um, take the PERT at Cocoa Beach or Eastern Florida. Make sure you're meeting at least the minimum scores in reading and writing, and then math if you're wanting to take a math class over there. Complete the online application for Eastern Florida. Once you receive your acceptance from Eastern Florida with your student ID, they call it a B number, it's gonna start B00. Um, then you're gonna complete the Eastern Florida dual enrollment orientation. Eastern Florida is going to reach out to us to request your high school transcript. You're going to complete the dual enrollment registration form with your Cocoa Beach counselor first. We're going to help you um, decide which courses to take and fill out that sheet for you. You're going to submit that registration form to your online portal to an advisor. The advisor is then going to register you for the class. And then the advisor is going to email your Titan email account. You're going to set that up once you've been accepted um, and then let you know you've been registered for your classes or if there was any issues, they would let you know through your Titan email only. Then you're going to follow the media center here at Cocoa Beach directions to get your college textbooks. So here's the link for the Eastern Florida textbook steps. Um, there's three different things that you'll submit to Mrs. Colburn. Um, so here's the link to do that. You can also go to the Cocoa Beach website, then departments, then library media center, then Eastern Florida textbooks and find it that way as well. Here is the PERT on Cocoa Beach's campus sign up. So students have to, if they're wanting to take the PERT at Cocoa Beach, we are offering that March 12th. Students have to sign up. They have to sign up by March 5th. If they are not signed up by March 5th, they will not be able to take the PERT with us on campus. So again, March 12th is our PERT here at Cocoa Beach, and the deadline to sign up for that is March 5th. So some more important dates, again, that deadline, March 5th to sign up for the PERT on Cocoa Beach's campus. The PERT is going to be March 12th at 8.45 a.m. Um, the student and parent agreement form, so the Cocoa Beach contract, um, I just said also do March 12th, so turn it in when, you're, when you go to take the PERT. And then the summer registration window for Eastern Florida class sign up is going to be March 29th tentatively um, and they don't have a date yet for the fall registration window but it will be after March 12th. It's usually around the same time but um, they haven't announced that yet. Um, some important dates so May 17th the summer A session starts. May 
17th, also summer B starts. June 14th, summer C starts. June 28th, summer D starts. So ninth grade students, if you are new to dual enrollment, you will not be able to start any of the May 17th start dates for the summer because you are still in ninth grade classes here. Our um, school year is not ending until June 3rd is the last date. So you won't be eligible to start dual enrollment until one of these dates here, the June 14th or June 28th. So keep that in mind. Um, and the fall start date has not been announced yet. So just some di different sessions um, to keep in mind. Most popular is a 12 week summer A. Um, but if you're wanting to take a summer course as a current ninth grader, you're, gonna, you're limited to C and D. Um, so here's your counselor information. Um, again, this is Ms. Cards, this is my email here. Um, Ms. Mackin has current 11th graders and 8th graders. So 11th graders reach out to her through email here. Um, and Ms. Haley has current 9th graders. So here's her email here. Our Eastern Florida advisor, the main one assigned to Cocoa Beach, is DJ Medima. His email is right here if you need to reach out to him. Um, I have the Eastern Florida testing number here if you want to schedule the PERT with them. Um, if you need that, 632-1111. Um, but we will again have it on campus as an option for the first time. Um, and then just kind of to summarize, so um, students can graduate high school with their associate's degree, and that's equivalent to like taking a lot of their prerequisites for their major once they go on to a four-year university. Um, and then in 2018-2019, 458 students um, graduated in the county with an associate's degree. Um, I believe last year we had six students who graduated with both their high school degree and associate's degree. And right now we have, I believe, seven students who are going to graduate this year with their associates. So definitely a very huge accomplishment for those students. Um, and that's it for the general information. Um, trying to think of some frequently asked questions that we usually get in an in-person um, dual enrollment night. Um, a big one is IB versus dual enrollment. Um, so do, IB students can take dual enrollment classes. Um, it's pretty, very, very rigorous and um, difficult to do that, but not impossible. Um, what students do sometimes is take just a summer course and then only worry about the IB specific requirements um, during the school year. So that's what um, some students do that are in the IB program. Um, it's pretty difficult during the school year to meet the IB required classes and add some dual enrollment classes as well. Um, so it's not really necessary to do both, but again, it is an option for students if they want to do that. Um, just talk to the counselor and or Mr. Callum as well if that's what the student's wanting to do. And then the difference between dual enrollment and IB, colleges still highly favor IB over dual enrollment courses because IB is an international program and it's a standardized program as well. The students complete the course and then at the end they test and then are awarded college credit whether they pass the exam or not. And then the colleges, since it's a standardized program, know exactly what those students have learned in that course, whereas the dual enrollment classes are dependent on that professor at that college. There's no standardization at all. So the colleges don't know what was covered or what was not. You could have had a really great teacher or a really bad teacher. Um, it just really depends in the colleges. It's not seen as rigorous or um, they don't tend to favor it as much. They like IB and AP courses more. Um, 
but definitely still a great program. Um, it just depends on your student. If um, some students do better in dual enrollment classes, some do better in IB with more of a structure. Um, it just really is dependent on that student and what they're wanting to major in, where, what college they're wanting to go to, whether they're wanting to stay in state, out of state. There's a lot of different factors to consider. Um, so if you had any more questions about any of this or about dual enrollment, please reach out to your counselor. Again, um, I'm Ms. Carr. I have um, current 10th graders and 12th graders. Um, so please reach out to me if you have any questions. Um, or if you want to just send me an email, I can get it to um, your student's counselor if that's just easier. All right, I hope you've learned a lot. Um, thank you so much for watching. Bye.